Well, uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm here, uh, um, I'm Viral Shah, I'm one of the creators of the Julia programming language. Um, have folks in this uh, audience heard about Julia before? Maybe I see a raise of hands. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of people. Uh, this number has been steadily increasing uh, over the last few years that I've been giving uh, you know, talks in Bangalore. Um, so you know, today I was, I'm going to focus a little bit about you know, how Julia is getting used. If you've heard me speak before, you've often heard me speak about the language and the syntax and what makes it nice and how it's fast. Um, today I'm going to actually focus a little bit more on the applications, how it's being used in the industry, how it's being used for the Internet of Things, and, uh, and you know, in robotics and uh, the way forward. Um, OK, so with that, you know, for those of you who haven't heard of Julia before, it's, uh, this is the last 25 years of, uh, you know, of technical computing or of data science, if, if you may call it. That's the new name for it, right, in the last few years. Um, R is very popular. Languages like MATLAB. There's, of course, Python, um, Mathematica, LabVIEW. There's, there's all these things in the tinier fonts that you've probably never even heard of, right? So there are about 40 languages out there that have been invented over the last 25 years. So as a programmer, you always ask yourself, why do I need one more, right? And uh, so what do you want, really? I mean, uh, you want to write your new algorithms. You want to explore your data at scale. You want to use all the new hardware, right? Your GPUs, your Xeon files, your Knight's Landing chips, uh, all the stuff that's coming out. And finally, build intelligent new products, uh, as the panel before us was talking about, right? So business as usual will simply not do. So before I get into the details, uh, I wanted to show you a picture. Uh, this is a, you know, this is the entire JuliaCon 2016 uh, attendees, and uh, you know, this is uh, the the famous MIT Computer Science Building in the backdrop. Uh, there were 250 attendees and 50 sp uh, speakers at this uh, at this conference. It has been growing every year, and uh, we've also had one in India. There might be one um, uh, very shortly as well in Bangalore. Um, so the four Julia cons have happened so far, um, and 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 things are just uh, getting exciting and growing. So, you know, when I said business as usual will simply not do, what does that mean, right? So today, if you look at a typical data science workflow, this is what it looks like: you develop your algorithms in Python, R, SAS, MATLAB, uh, all these scripting languages, right? Which uh, an analyst or a statistician or a mathematician is comfortable using. Then you have a team that will rewrite the same program in C++ or C Sharp or Java. And, and then you have your deployment, correct? I mean, I'm sure everyone in this room is familiar with this workflow, and this is, this is what everyone's used to, right? You're either doing the, the orange box or you're doing the red box. Now, I'm sure that all of you have paused at this, uh, you know, at this workflow and asked yourself, do we really need to write the same program twice every time? You know, after I deploy it, maybe a new algorithm comes up or I fix some bugs. Again, I have to go back, fix the, you know, the development phase uh, in the orange box, then rewrite it again in the red box, right? This is a huge amount of waste, a huge amount of time spent, and what we really want is the data scientists and the deployment teams or the DevOps teams to work together. What we, mean, what we need is data science and DevOps to work together as opposed to at cross purposes going forward. And that's where sort of Julia comes in. It removes that red box. That means that if uh, both the, you know, the people who are developing these algorithms, the data scientists, as well as the people who are deploying them, um, whether they be the programmers, computer scientists, DevOps people, they all can use the same language, the same platform, and iterate together and, and work together. And this has really been the power of Julia, if you ask me, right? I've been doing this since 2009 now. And uh, it was a hobby before, and now it's become commercial, we have a company that's supporting it professionally. And you know, if, if I look back at you know, what has really made Julia interesting and exciting, it is, it is, it's more than the language, it's the people. It rarely have communities that are so diverse come together and worked on a common platform. We have people who are compiler writers, we have people who are computer scientists, we have people who are physicists, engineers, um, you know, linguists, cognitive scientists, all of them working together to make Julia like the best language for data science, for technical computing um, that you can imagine. Here are some stats on the language. Um, the Julia community has been growing rapidly. The, the blue bars have, uh, have shot up since I prepared this chart. 
And uh, we estimate the size of the Julia community worldwide is 150,000 users. Um, you know, our GitHub project has 500 contributors. There are 1,000 open source projects that are based on Julia. So Julia has a, an ecosystem of 1,000 packages. Uh, if something is not in base Julia, you can extend it as a package. Um, as you can see, you know, it was quite, uh, it was quiet on Stack Overflow a few years ago, but now the Stack Overflow volumes have started taking off, and, uh, you know, this is a sign of a growing community where people are asking questions, working, learning, and so on and so forth. And then on GitHub, finally, 16,000 GitHub starts across every Julia package that is registered in our, in our uh, metadata. So it's a very um, actively developed living and breathing community. It's not a small you know, community where you know, five people are writing something and then uh, you know, everyone else is using. There's hundreds of contributors and uh, you know, tens or thousands or hundreds of thousands of users. This is a map of the Julia community and uh, you, know, it, you, you can see sort of it lights, lights up in the usual places. It lights up in Silicon Valley on the east coast of the US in the UK and Germany and France. Um, in India, you see a big uh, concentration in Bangalore, and then you see the usual bits in China and Japan and Korea. Um, little bits in Australia, Brazil, South Africa. So th these are users uh, who have been sort of following Julia, using it, uh, you know, working with it forever. Uh, one of the things that I personally like is that red dot in Bangalore, because very few projects, um, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, get uh, you know, thought leadership out of Bangalore in the open source world. And Julia is one of those projects where at least I personally started working right here in Bangalore. And uh, we've had a lot of people uh, you know, who are core contributors in the Julia community from here as well. Okay, so you know, the mandatory performance benchmarks, I'm not going to dwell on these too much, but Julia is extremely fast. Um, if, you, if you see that line uh, there, which is 10 to the power zero on the y-axis, so that's, that's the ratio of Julia to, uh, that's the ratio of that language to C. And if you look at the Julia, you know, section, which is right in the middle there, actually I could just go there and point to it. So, you know, right here, you'll see that all the Julia programs in these benchmarks are roughly as fast as the C counterparts, and unlike almost all the other languages that you see out there. All right, so it's great. Julia is fast, it's easy, it's